All right, so for this lesson on how to use the new input system for Unity, we're going to be going over how to enable local multiplayer, which Unity has actually made super easy to do. Now, before we begin, make sure that you're subscribed to our channel so that you can be up to date with all our latest videos. All right, so here I have my 2D platformer project opened inside of Unity. And the first thing that we need to do to have multiple local players is to create a prefab out of our player object which I've actually already done. Right here I have my player object in the hierarchy and right here I have the same player object in my project window. Now if you don't know how to create a prefab all you have to do is select the object that you want to create a prefab out of in your hierarchy and drag it into your project window. Once you have your prefab created you can then delete that object from your hierarchy. Now at this point we need to create a new empty game object in our hierarchy so I'm going to click create and then create empty. We can then rename this to player manager and we're going to add a component. The component that we need to add is the player input manager. Once you have this component added, the first thing that we need to do is add the player prefab. So we're gonna select the prefab that we created out of our player object, and we're gonna drag it into the player prefab field. Next, they have this drop-down menu for the join behavior, and they have three different options, but we're just going to leave it on join player when a button is pressed. So at this point, let's test this component out. So I'm gonna click play, and using a gamepad, I'm gonna press a button. And there you can see it's instantiated my player prefab, and then I can move this player around with the same gamepad. I then have a second gamepad, which I have plugged in, and I'm gonna press another button, and there you can see it's instantiated a second player, and I can move this player with the second gamepad. Then if I try to move both players with both gamepads, you can see that they move, and they move separately. So it's super quick, super easy, and a lot of fun. Now the last thing that I'll mention about this component is the first setting, which is the notification behavior. This has a drop-down menu similar to the player input component, where you can select between these four different options. Once again, I'm going to select Invoke Unity Events, which gives us the similar Unity events found on UI components. And once again, this allows you to create a script with public functions that have the parameter of type player input in which you can pair those functions to these events to further customize the behavior of your player input manager. Hey, thanks for watching to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this lesson, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and also remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.